Hello awesome people, what is going on? It's Brad Fusion here and welcome to a unique Fusion Industries video. So, the last Fusion Industries video I did was on a ship I called the Taurus Transporter and it was for my first time building a large small ship if going by the game's internal category system of small, large and then station. So it was a small ship but it was built to be at least compatible with actually having players walk around inside of it, it was decent in its size. And I kind of like that idea, and I wanted to expand upon that a little bit further to see what sort of limitations I can get to, or how much I could actually build in terms of making a small ship that's actually got decent size to it. And that's what I'm showing you guys here today. Now, sadly, I haven't been able to finish this project. It is more of a personal project to me, so it's not going to be released in the workshop, because, well, one, it isn't actually done. And secondly, again, it has so many mods on it, that uh, compiling a list of this thing would be near impossible because I can't figure out exactly the amount of mods I was using on this game and to find them and link them all, blah 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 blah. But it wouldn't matter anyways because this isn't even going public because I can't get this to finish and it runs like absolute crap because of the limit I've actually reached within the game's engine. But anyway, let me show you guys my little personal project which again isn't finished but it's, it's basically just a few little things here and there. So here we have it. It isn't named but I kind of like how it turned out for the most part. The main thing it's missing is kind of a more aesthetic appearance to it and some thrusters on the back end and a few lights here and there. That's mostly what it's missing, but thrusters do uh, kind of take a, a bit more of attacks because they emit these sorts of particles, but I'll get to that in a moment anyway. So this is the ship. Again, it's kind of unnamed for the most part, so maybe I'll leave you guys' name in the comments down below. I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll finish this once the engine is more optimized in a way, but right now I'm getting anywhere between 10 to 15 frames per second in this world right now. So, and it gets worse depending where you are inside the ship. But anyway, let's explain the weaponry first before going on the inside. So on the top here we have a quite a few turrets. This is mainly used for taking out either small ships or incoming missiles. So I, I didn't want this ship to be overpowered. I didn't want this thing to be full of guns top, down, left, right, front and back, just so it could protect every angle of it. So I've kind of limited it in certain ways of where everything is. And by the way, everything is connected in the ship. So all the turrets, all the containers, the oxygen systems are all connected in a way that works. And I'll get to that in a moment as well. So yeah, turrets on top for taking out missiles and small ships. And then down here you have the main artillery, which is the Hellfire missiles. Now these are broadside bombardments, kind of inspired I guess by Rebel Galaxy. I kind of really liked how that worked, that, that fighting mechanic. So we're kind of utilizing them in such a way that anything that comes up beside this thing is more than, uh, more than welcome to be destroyed completely by the bottom of these, and these are rapid fire, which means they do go through ammo quite crazily. And then the final weapon on the ship is on the front side here, which is these uh, these uh, gremlin cannons, I think they're called. If I got the name wrong, I forgive me, I'll read them out later on, uh, or I'll correct myself later on. But these are really great at taking down anything on the front side. These are rapid fire, obviously, Gatling cannons, which look amazing. And I'll show you guys that as well. But that's it for the weapons. There's nothing down below here to really protect it. And I guess that's the weak side of the ship. But the ship is heavily armored in all directions. In most cases, the armor is anywhere between two to five blocks thick on top, bottom and sides. And we'll get to that in a moment. So let's fly inside through what was going to be basically the gravity chamber of the ship just down here. Now this is used to launch a smaller ship out of this ship at higher speeds given that they need to get out of here. Basically this was meant for, I mean it's, it's mostly a multi-purpose ship but it was built around exploration and finding planets so when planets did come out the ship would go towards those planets kind of lay in orbit and then send out some, a smaller ship to land down on the planet to investigate everything that's going on. But uh, I never got around to doing the smaller ship because again, the world is rather laggy as it is. But this can fit a rather sizable ship inside and it does have a connected to connect it to the cargo area of the ship and everything else that may be inside of here. But anyway, so we do have a switch here that can close it up. So if we press this button just over here, we can close off the cargo bay doors which again will seal it in and make us produce oxygen if everything is sealed up. And again, I've connected this ship in a way that has oxygen going to every room possible, and there are airlocks as well. So if I quickly close these doors, you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. So if I come over here, just close all these doors real quick. I get to each room in a second, but I just want to show you guys the actual airlock uh, capability of this ship once it detects that there's actually oxygen in the ship working. Now, there is issues with oxygen working in smaller ships right now. I don't think it actually registers, but I did this 
kind of in preparation of this actually being a thing. Now there might be a few reasons why this room doesn't have oxygen, and I think it might be with the connector. Because this has given me issues in the past, but I thought it was actually a result, so it may be back to being a little buggy again. For whatever reason, because the connector has like a little teeny gap up there, it thinks that oxygen is leaking, therefore it won't build up in the room. And this has happened frequently, but again, occasionally it'll fix itself and it would think that there's oxygen here and it'll be fine. But if I get rid of it right now, you guys can see I should be able to put oxygen in here. I think anyways. But either way, we won't worry about the oxygen in this room because we do have other rooms to demonstrate anyway. So the walls you may notice are marked with certain colors. This is done in a way to color code which direction the ship to head in. So for example, on this side of the door you have the blue and the green. The blue is for the crew quarters and the green is for the cargo area. And if we actually go to the other side of the door here, by opening this up, and this might vent out oxygen, or not, uh, you'll notice that it has only orange on this side. Now I've done this in a way to kind of color code the hallway so people know which direction they're going and basically this indicates what is behind this door and you guys can see this here as well and up there as well and so on. So it works in the sense that yeah you guys can navigate the ship quite easily without having to paint the whole walls because I, I originally did have the walls completely painted with like a line leading towards where to go but that was rather confusing because lines don't really give a sense of direction so I thought this was a little easier a little better to understand but anyway let's begin with the backside of the ship by going to the engineering area which I quite like the look of. So yeah, orange means engineering in this ship in particular. Now on both sides of the hangar here, we do have these airlocks. This is used primarily for basically, again, if someone docks in, they can steal it up, uh, vent oxygen back into this room, and then they can go around the ship as they desire, as they feel free to do so. And that's something that happens when oxygen decides to go a little crazy. Anyway, let's show you guys the reactor room first. So this is the reactor room. This is really kind of cool. I love the sound of these and the appearance of these. Now this is colored to be orange, but they can be colored to be whatever colors you guys want. I just like orange because it's my favorite color, but uh, again, if I show you guys this here, you can have it say green if you want, blue, so on. But I, again, I prefer the orange color because that, again, is my favorite color and this room does look really, really good because of it. Anyway, that's the reactors there. Now if we go back to the other side of engineering, we have oxygen generators, which uh, kind of fit nicely into the wall there. I kind of like how this is done. And again, on the other side of this wall, there's probably about a few, few layers of armor protecting everything that's going on here. And this does connect uh, throughout the rest of the ship. In here, we have just a spare room. I'm not too sure what to make of this room. This room has an orange light because, oh, not orange light, sorry. This room has a purple light because I felt like giving it one. This has an, an emergency seal, I guess, because, well, I don't know. I, I just felt like having that there. But um, that, 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 that was, I, I don't know, <laughs> this, this room is here for no reason, but I kind of just wanted to make use of that little bit of space. Again, just because I felt like it. I was thinking of actually extending the reactor room to give this thing more power, but I, I thought that, I don't know, it looks kind of cool the way it is. Anyway, that's it for the engineering. The other side is completely symmetrical, and that is Jesus making an appearance. Um, <laughs> sorry, this happens whenever there's oxygen that gets vented. I don't know why it happens, but it happens nonetheless. But yeah, here's the exact same side over here as well. Now, the reason why it has this many oxygen generators is because the ship can go long distances by putting the crew into cryostasis. And at that point, you're going to want a lot of oxygen to be generated in that way. But we'll talk about that once we get to the actual cryostasis rooms. So, the, the, uh, the other thing the airlocks lead to, by the way, is a staircase that leads you upstairs. Uh, not this one though, the other one's just over here, and I'll get to that as well. So yeah, we come through this door over here, I can show you guys the staircase system. So again, most connect to this staircase system, the staircases have these orange lights. I'll show you guys just upstairs once we get to that, but let's show you guys the rest of downstairs first. Now again, these rooms don't have lights, I, I kind of pointed that out earlier on. I kind of reached the limitation of the world without getting it to the point of being too laggy to record. So this is kind of where I've stopped most of the decorations and everything. As I would have these rooms, I think this was going to be kind of like a uh, an armory of sorts, like the preparation for leaving to go down to planet. So they'd have like uh, containers here that have suits and everything to equip, that have weapons and everything. That was the intention for this room anyways. But again, I didn't want to go too crazy with it because it would decrease the performance of the world just a little bit too much. But in here we have the crew rooms where people rest, at least short term anyways, which these aren't exactly too special. Let me seal this off real quick here. I'll seal this off as well so I don't have to worry about oxygen going all over the place. And uh, again, oxygen flows through every room uh, in most cases, given that it actually decides to pump oxygen, which it seems like it might be bugged right now. But either way, let's uh, open this up here. And you can see 
Oh no, there's oxygen in this room. Again, very simple. I didn't want to go over too overboard with the decorations. And not to mention, there isn't that many decorations for small ships when it comes to interior cosmetics. So, I don't know, maybe people will start working on that after the ship. Maybe this will influence people to work more on having smaller, lar uh, sorry, larger small ships, if that makes any sense. And maybe decorations might actually become a thing. And it seems like we actually have oxygen in this room now. So yay. Yay for no leaks. But yeah, every room is almost identical in that way. Just because I want to keep things simple. Now in here, we have an air leak. But we have the cargo room, which has the green lighting and a lot of containers. Now this is used for carrying either uh, food, uh, ammunition for the turrets. These, are, again, are all connected in that way. And I'll probably take apart the ships to go the interiors. And I'll get to that just in a moment as well. But uh, yeah, cargo room. Quite a, quite a few containers here. I don't want to go too overboard with like large containers. And I didn't want to take up too much room. So I felt these were kind of packed away rather nicely. But uh, then we have another upstairs here. But I want to show you guys these stairs just in a moment. And this up here is a secondary reactor room or cargo room, depending on the purpose that you want this for. I just have the reactors in here just to give myself a, an additional little bit of power. And these reactors are really cool as well. These are the Arc Wedge reactors, which you guys can download on the workshop. It should be on the front page still, actually. Anyway, these stairs here, if I push this button, actually retract inside the wall, which I think is really cool. And, and all the stairs are like that, just for convenience sake. Uh, they, they can retract and they look, it looks really nice when they do so. But uh, again, press the button and the uh, stairs come out and you can feel free to walk up them as you wish. But uh, there we go, okay. Now we get to go upstairs into this room here, which was going to be a secondary bridge of sorts, because this here has a lot of armor in front of it. And by a lot, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like, oh, I thought there was a lot. Maybe the top side that actually has a lot. Oh, well, I, I did say that there was two to three walls of um, armor, or even more than that, depending on the certain areas. I know there was one side that was heavily armored. Maybe I'm, maybe it wasn't this room. But this room, again, was going to be like a secondary bridge of sorts, because the bridge can be bombarded, as it's kind of a little bit more noticeable. So having a bridge up here isn't the worst of ideas. But uh, anyway, we'll move on to uh, other rooms here. So this, again, is like a hallway. We could have stuff here, but uh, I mean, I've done this in a way that... In case something does go wrong, rooms can be sealed up instantaneously to kind of prevent leaks going everywhere. And again, oxygen does flow through the majority of the rooms here. If I, oh, Where is the oxygen on this room? Well, I guess this allows me to demonstrate uh, how oxygen actually works throughout the ship. So the way I built it is if I go to put down, say, an air vent, if I delete a wall here, I can instantly connect to an air vent, which is just perfect in how that works. So yeah, I basically have convey systems running along with these parts of the walls here, the top corner parts. Basically meaning I can connect oxygen wherever I want, which is really cool. And I think even here I can. Yeah, if I wanted to, I can connect it there as well. But there's already oxygen ventilations on. Am I using an old save? I feel like I might be using an old save for whatever reason. This doesn't have as much progress as I had previously. Because I swear this room had oxygen as well. Does this one not have oxygen either? Okay, that is strange. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it feels like the game's gone back to using an older save for whatever reason, but anyway, moving on from that, the, the gravgen over there just is a temporary thing, by the way. But, um, yeah, here you have the other staircase, by the way, this is what looks really cool. So basically, the staircase is kind of hidden away in this wall, now this was kind of done as a joke, but I thought I, I kind of liked it, so I left it how it was, but if I press the button here, you can see the staircase come out through the wall. It looks so cool. But again, that, that was mostly done as a joke, because uh, it's not realistic in any way, but it still looks cool anyway, so I just had to leave it in for the most part. But anyway, moving on this way, we'll head towards where the bridge staircase is, as well as the cryostasis room. So this room here leads up to the bridge, just up there. And this here leads to the medical bay and cryostasis area of the ship. So in here we have, again, crisis, which is all connected to the oxygen generators, so people can sleep for long times if need be. Uh, there's, there's, there's the exact same amount of crisis pods as there are rooms on the ship. I think there's more, actually. No, I, th I think this is the exact same amount. So yeah, people can sleep. Maybe someone can stay awake if they want to, but for the most part, everyone in here, it, you know, it is, is right for the most part. And then you have, again, medical beds of such, uh, of such nature and medical stations here as well, which is kind of cool. So yeah, in case something needs to be done to people, they can lay down here and they can get themselves healed up or they can go into crisis for however long the journey requires. Now time to go up and check the final bridge and then a weapons test because I'm pretty sure you guys want to see that as well. And then we'll go do the internals. Now, I don't actually have a button for this staircase here, which isn't too hard to get to, because I can just go with this and then go close. There we go. And here comes down the staircase. Now again, this is the bridge. You probably have lost orientation of which way we are on the ship. This is the back side, that's the front side, and I'll get to that 
by going up here and you guys can see this anyway. So up here is the bridge. So we have a few command chairs depending on what situation is needed. Some can be control gunners uh, and so on. But you can do this by yourself if you need to. You don't need other people but it makes it a little easier. So if someone wants to control a specific turret they can do so. But uh, for the most part, you can see at the front of the ship, you can see all the turrets, all the thrusters and everything, which is really cool. But let's get inside the seat here and show you guys the uh, how shitty I've done the thrusters on the back here, because this is only done temporarily. Uh, I don't know why I put these on here, because I, I couldn't figure out a right design either. I've gone through that many designs for thrusted layouts that I couldn't figure out which ones I wanted on the thing. So I've kind of abandoned that as well, because again, when I actually was putting a few thrusters on there, the world was getting extremely laggy. So I've kind of cut back on them. I was using different thrusters, not just the ones that you see on there right now. I've been using azimuth ones, I've been using a whole bunch of different ones as well. But I couldn't find out a right pattern and the right look, because there's not that many... Because what I wanted ultimately was a large thruster, kind of like the Titan engine, but for a small ship. And there's not that many really big engines for small ships, which is kind of disappointing. So maybe once there's more engines like that for smaller ships, I'd be a little bit happier adding them to this. But for now, I, I can't really figure out a workaround for it. But anyway, uh, you can, there are definitely thrusters in some places, like down below here. You've got thrusters and on the front side, you've also got thrusters. And you've got reverse thrusters as well on the front side near the uh, gremlins there. I think they are actually called other gremlins. Let me quickly check here. Uh, if I go to weapons, um, I think it's Gatlin. Small Gatlin ship turret. No, maybe not. I, I did think it was called the Gremlins, but I might be mistaken by saying that. Um, we'll look through because it should be on the toolbar anyway, so or it was anyway. So what I'll do is I'll quickly bring down the weapons we have right now. So it is the oh no the Grendel, sorry not the Gremlins, my mistake. Uh, I'll bring them down now. Uh, we'll do the turrets. I mean I I'll test them. Out. I'll show you guys how they work you know, by activating them. Then I'll just make a ship go past. And then we'll do the Hellfire Missiles. Now my intention was to do the Hellfire Missiles firing uh, independently. So you'd fire the left side and the right side. But I haven't been able to distinguish which sides just yet. Uh, but, but you guys can understand how that would work anyway. So let's fire the... Um, let's go back to the spectator cam over here. And let us fire the Gremlins to begin... Uh, the Grendels. I can call them Gremlins. Uh, but let's fire these and you guys can see how this is. So 3, 2, 1. Firing. Now. But look at that. Like, that is like a wall of fire right there. There's no way any small ship can fly through that and survive, which is great. And by the way, the ship can turn rather fast. Not not incredibly fast, but it can definitely turn for a small ship. Uh, I mean, a ship of this size, it, it, I would consider this to be rather maneuverable. So yeah, there it is for the, uh, for the Grendels. Rather quite powerful, if I say so myself. But uh, let's go back to looking at the Hellfire missiles here. I'm just show you guys what a barrage from these look like, given that I can actually barrage without the game freezing up on me. So let's give this a try. I'll fire one or two missiles first, uh, one or two clicks, and then I'll move on to holding down the actual button. So here's one fire. You can see that they go all the way there and explode at a certain distance. And again, they'll do the same thing and explode at the distance. Now I'm going to hold down firing now. This does cause the game to lag, and it might cause the missiles to explode prematurely, but it shouldn't damage the ship in any way, because I, ha I haven't had an explosion yet that was so close to damage my ship. So, holding down the fire, in 3, 2, 1, go. Now you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. I have to still, I have to have to reiterate that just a little bit more. Now they do have a decent reload time after a barrage because of the the way that they're designed. Now, I'll show you guys them really quickly here. As you can see, they have quite a few missile pods. And once these are exhausted, it does have a reload time, but it does allow it to. Again, I mean, these have high rate of fire, but the reload time is kind of what takes back on that. But still, really cool weaponry. I, I do love this. It does make it like a great ship for this type of combat. I, I want to, like, once the game gets optimized a little bit more, I want to see a fight between two of these. I don't know how that would play out, but it would be extremely interesting to see how two of these will actually fight. But that's it for the weapons. We'll do the test of the turrets in just a moment here. Let me go and turn them on. So if I go to the turrets... Uh, we'll turn these on and we'll make them target smaller ships. So we'll go owner of me. 
and we'll go target small ships, but not players. That way it, it won't shoot at me, just in case. I don't think it will, because it's mine, but it, it, it should shoot at moving object and smaller ships. So let's try getting a smaller ship spawned in, and we'll see how that goes. So let's get out here. Let's just delete the ceiling, because I don't really mind it. I mean, I was already using this as a way of getting out anyways. So let's get out here, if we can. There we go, and just leaving real quick. Okay, cool. And now what I'll do is I'll summon in a smaller ship, which shouldn't take too long to do. We'll fly it past, release it, and then we'll see how the turrets take it out, if they do take it out. Turrets do act really weirdly when AI controlled, which is why you might have gunmen yourself controlling the turrets. But I think they'll be fun enough to take out this as, it, as I fly in with it. So we're going to go with a... What ship should we go in with? Something that's decent. What's the Phantom Fight? I can't remember which one, which one that actually is. Let's go with the... um. Actually, you know what? We're going to go with the Alistair, because that's a good ship for this, this type of scenario, given that I actually had the mods installed. Okay, we're good to now pilot this thing. So let's get in. There we go. Okay, do we have thrusters activated? Yes, indeed we do. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly this towards the ship and get it out once we get to a, uh, like a decent speed. Because we, we want this thing to not be going too fast, but just fast enough to kind of like a flyby of, of sorts. To see how that's actually, how that works. So we'll get up to about maybe 60. There we go. Now we'll, uh, hang on. Okay. Now time to get out and see how this goes. So turrets are firing. And you can already see. <laughs> oh my Hang on. It did, did it suddenly kick on its own dampness or something? So that, that, that did stop rather instantaneously. But uh, now it is just drifting through space. And all the cockpits have been destroyed, I think. Yeah, cockpits have been destroyed, and I think the reactors have all been disabled, hence why there's no engines on it anymore. And let's take this thing for a fly and see how close we can get before we actually get uh, get wrecked, I guess. <laughs> okay, there we are. Let's fly towards this thing and see how long uh, see, see how long it takes for us to get uh, get hit here. So, or how long uh, until we get get shot? So I'm gonna try doing. Oh, they're already shooting. Oh, God. Yeah, of course they are. Well, I didn't... Whoa, did I just warp through the ship? That was... That was crazy. Hang on. I don't know what happened then. It, like, when I got near the ship, I suddenly activated like, some sort of weird, like, semi-warp drive and just went right through the thing. That was crazy. But that was kind of cool, I have to admit. Uh, did, what did we lose? Oh, we lost a few of our engines. Uh, a few of our internals as well. That isn't too good. But we still have two engines here. Not much, though. <laughs> Let's fly back and see what actually happened to the ship, because I'm very confused with what actually turned out, or what actually happened there. I mean, we did definitely get a fair amount of our ship destroyed in that uh, in that little encounter. Admittedly, I thought we would have been uh, shot out before we even got anywhere near it, hence why I wasn't slowing down or I wasn't redirecting myself. So let's come back here whilst they kind of bombard that thing for a little while longer. And let's just see if we actually did do any damage from our little, uh, little breeze through here. Now, I have been having a few issues with the game lately, since I am ending this video, I'm going to say this now. Uh, for those of you who are wanting Space Engineers Ascension series to be continued, I don't know how this is going to happen. Honestly, I've gone through one issue to another issue, and I, for whatever reason, more and more keeps happening, and... We did actually make a hole. Through, did, wait, did we... That is strange. So, we actually completely... That doesn't seem right, does it? Did we go through the ship completely like that? We got, the ship is actually now moving, by the way. I don't know if that's noticeable. If I slow down here, the ship is now moving to the left because it doesn't have any thrusters in that direction. But that is strange. If that's what, what happened, if that is what, what happened... Wow, why am I getting stuffed up on that? If that is what happened, Jesus. Um, yeah, so I'll show you guys a quick clip of a few things that have been happening in my game lately. Uh, and, and the fact that I can't even now spawn into the world because it gives me a ragdoll issue, which I haven't even modified the ragdoll, so that's fun. But I'll try my best to try and figure this out. I know a lot of people are getting impatient, and I do apologize for that. But until I get this issue solved, I don't think... I might have to move on to another series, just temporarily, before... my Because my, my big project is still being worked on, and that's a project which I might as well tell you guys the name of, for anyone who doesn't know. The project is called Afterlife. 
which is a series that I will be working on that is meant to follow Ascension, but again, I haven't gotten to the point of it being revealed yet. I, I can't reveal much of it. Maybe a little teaser. I don't know. We'll see. If, if editing me feels generous or leads to the teaser, then maybe I will. But that might be coming in a few days or so. So anyway, I'll leave this video here. Again, the ship doesn't have a name yet, but it uh, it definitely holds its own when it comes to combat and the multi-purpose uh, positions it feels. So uh, it fills. So it, it has cargo space for if it wants to do, if it wants to be like a transporter of that nature. It has the exploration uh, capabilities, given that it has it will probably have fast engines. I mean, its acceleration right now isn't exactly terrible, uh, but yeah, it has weapons if it wants to get into combat. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Admittedly, its exterior isn't the greatest, but I don't mind it. I don't mind the blocky feel that some ships have. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome, everyone.